Wilson Fisk's hubris as mayor has cast the city into a full-on street battle. And despite all the blood and violence happening, Fisk doesn't care. With all-out war currently in motion, will the superheroes be able to save New York City, or will violence consume them? Vengeance has been the name of the game for Devil's Reign, and this final issue ramps that bloodlust up to max levels. Devil's Reign issue number 6 is truly an epic conclusion that represents the culmination of this event. Of all the issues in this series, this one feels like the biggest. Sidarski and the creative team packed the Daredevil's finale to the brim with the right bits that it needs to end up as a suitable finale. Traveling at full throttle from the first page, this has the perfect blend of what we have come to expect from a, from a Zardarsky comic. That being tremendous fight scenes in numerous locations, along with emotional and satisfying peaks with some brilliant story beats. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. The plot wraps up everything in a satisfying manner, and the many of those features that have been brewing up under the surface finally make their presence known. What Zardarsky also does well is what he does with the epilogue which was honestly a genuine surprise, because there's a direction that, that appears to insinuate a further chapter or a particular direction for this part of the Marvel Universe. But instead, that plan is subverted, and the book ends in a much more completed tone. But the manner in which it subverts is it actually makes sense for the characters. It's not shocking for shock's sake value, like when Kylo Ren kills Snoke, because fuck it, let's have a surprise moment. Legit, this move makes sense for the characters that are involved. And sure, even if the story itself has not always been the most original, the characters and the dialogue within them shine. And while the subplots are wrapped up, like with the case of Doc Ock and Elektra's love for Matt, the story's A-plot of Daredevil vs. Kingpin gets much more focused. Which is great because, because although there are other members of New York's hero community involved, I mean, let's face it, Daredevil's corner has been the most important to the plot, and it's essentially the soul of the comic. Cicetto has taken the responsibility of drawing a blockbuster event on his shoulders. And holy shit, did he absolutely succeed. The carnage of the Times Square brawl is fantastic, with its balance between coherence and chaos. There is a feeling of great scale as many characters are added to the panels, but the action is also up close and personal, creating a sense of intimacy. And when the comic eventually moves to a quieter moment, it genuinely feels more peaceful for both the characters and the reader. The switch in tone and mood is captured brilliantly, and whenever you get those sudden moments of brutality, it's both shocking and well illustrated to the point where you feel extremely connected to it. Oh, and on a side note, in terms of art and character design, the best thing to come out of this run is the revamped Doc Ock, which is actually intimidating and close to what the big screen has portrayed. As always, the colors are stunning, Monet's usage of vibrant shades adds to the gravitas of the book's situation. And by adding fog or smoke-like textures to the setting, it brings this influential atmosphere to the comic, which is definitely appropriate considering that this issue is a badass street fight. Overall, Devil's Reign issue number 6 brings multiple brilliant stories to a close, while also adding a new one for both Daredevil and Elektra. And sure, though Devil's Reign never quite feels like a universe-changing event, the vibe isn't to be that. Rather, it's more so a chapter within Zdrowski and Tuchetto's excellent Daredevil run which I cannot wait to continue later on this summer, with a brand new sexy number 1. Devil's Reign issue number 6 gets a 9 out of 10. All Out Chaos is going down in downtown New York, with Captain America leading the team of superheroes in the battle against the villainous Thunderbolts, along with the superior foe, <laughs> along with the superior four, who are all being mind controlled by the supercharged Purple Man, who under Mayor Wilson Fisk's orders is here to kill every single hero and to burn down the city if need be. And to add even more icing to the cake, Purple Man is also mind controlling the citizens of New York into war against the superheroes. So yeah folks, shit is literally popping. But that's not the only thing that's been popping, because amidst the battle, Daredevil gets a phone call from Kristen McDuffie, and she tells our hero that she just witnessed the brutal murder of Mike Murdock murdered into a bloody pulp by the one and only Wilson Fisk. Now knowing the fact that Mike was killed because Fisk thought it was Matt, we see an enraged daredevil swear to his god and to all the heavens that he's going to kill Wilson Fisk. Thus he abandons the battlefield whilst telling Kristen to get to the DA's office 
and reveal to them what she saw. Meanwhile, Luke Cage realizes that there's no point in fighting the villains, because they're all being mind controlled by the Purple Man. And given the fact that everyone in New York City is now against them, they're basically on a time limit, because they need to do whatever it takes to shut down Purple Man. Picking up with Wilson Fisk, we check in with Big Willie arriving at his home, with Mary being glad that he's back. Because in case you didn't know bro, there's some crazy shit happening outside. However, she is quickly shocked by all the blood covering Fisk. And so yeah, her response is, what the fuck man? But Fisk assures her that it's not his blood, rather it's Daredevil. For I finally did it girl, I killed my enemy, I destroyed Daredevil, and hot damn on a stick, am I feeling mighty fine. But also, I'm a bloody fool. I'm a fool for not realizing that I don't need any of this crap, because at the end of the day, all I need is you. However, their getaway is not going to be easy, because as they begin to drive away, we see the arrival of Elektra, standing right in front of their moving car, and she dives right through the window, stabbing Fisk in the shoulder. And because of this attack, it causes the car to crash, flipping upside down. Now as Elektra springs out of the car midair, with Fisk crawling out of the wreckage, Elektra lets him know that she's going to kill him for what, for what he's done, because from her point of view, she thinks Matt is dead. But that's when we see the arrival of Daredevil, letting Elektra know to not worry, because he's got this. Because when Fisk dies today, the last thing he'll see is Daredevil. And with Fisk looking in disbelief, his hatred basically consumes him, and it forces the villain to charge at him with the concept of murder on his mind. And thus, Mortal Kombat begins. Returning back to the chaos in downtown New York, we have Doc Ock letting his variants know that they are Octavius, not a puppet of Wilson Fisk, thus commanding the autos to use their perfect minds to break free. But that's when he gets blasted out of nowhere, with the arrival of none other than the real Iron Man, who teases Doc Ock for having a perfect mind, but for never considering investing in armor, or a solid haircut. And with that we have the arrival of the Fantastic Four, Moon Knight, and Dark Hawk, dubbed as the convict Calorie that just broke out of Murbin in prison, and arriving just in time in order to turn the tide on the battlefield. Yet this is when Luke Cage notices Joseph, the child of the Purple Man, walking through the battlefield, and he is gunning for his father, commanding the Thunderbolts like a badass mofo to get the hell out of his way. And as the Purple Man notices Joseph, he begins to mock him for being the one who got away. And for being the dick that he is, Purple Man lets him know that his pathetic brothers and sisters are all dead and that he now has their power. But sweet Christmas folks, because this is where we see Luke Cage rushing towards Joseph to save the boy's life from the Purple Man. And from there the hero places his own anti-mind control device on Joseph in order to slow down the Purple Man's influence. But the villain mocks him for his stupidity, thereby mind controlling Luke Cage to kill his own son. And just like that, Luke Cage puts his hands on Joseph's head, preparing to break the boy's neck. And with tears streaming down his face, Joseph cries over his sibling's death, and for not being strong enough to fight the Purple Man by himself. But that's when Luke Cage lets the boy know that he's not alone. And boom, Joseph lets out a devastating cry, telling the Purple Man to stop. Picking back up on the other side of the city, an enraged Daredevil is, is going up against Wilson Fisk, and a brutal fist fight with the only thing going through his head, kill Wilson Fisk. However, because of Daredevil's violent and uncontrollable rage, it's making him sloppy thereby allowing Fisk to get the upper hand as he beats Daredevil to shit, letting him know that he was finally content with what he had done. He was finally happy with his life, but then Daredevil had to go and ruin it. He had to fuck his memories, and with hitting Daredevil with a devastating blow against the wreckage of the car, we have Elektra going toe to toe with Typhoid Mary, and as they trade back and forth in a fierce sword fight, Elektra lets Mary know that the problem with her, she relies too much on weapons whereas Elektra is a weapon herself, and this is where she kicks Typhoon Mary into submission. Meanwhile, with Wilson Fisk continuing to beat the crap out of Daredevil, hope seems to be lost, for Wilson Fisk is about to win, and he's about to beat the man without fear, the blind lawyer from Hell's Kitchen. However, feeling inspired with a jolt of battle and Jack Murdoch sensation, the hero manages to grab Fisk's cane from the wreckage, for which he uses the power of the Purple Man to mind control whomever he has desired. And from there he commands Fisk to step back, to which Daredevil then orders the villain that he wants Fisk to suffer for all of his sins, commanding him to remember all of the lies that he has destroyed. And upon seeing Fisk at his lowest, Daredevil breaks the cane across his face. Now this is where Elektra intervenes, as she lets Daredevil know that she won't stop him because, you know, God knows how many people she's killed. However, despite the fact that, you know, Fisk deserves it, 
Matthew Murdock is not an assassin. Instead, he's an idiot who chose to become Daredevil. He chose to become a fucking symbol. And with all of New York watching, waiting to see what kind of symbol he'll be, Matt chooses to be the right symbol, a superhero. And it's with that where he walks away. Picking up in downtown New York, the Thunderbolts and the Superior Four, freed from the influence of the Purple Man, Doc Ock and his variants escape the battlefield, while the heroes round up the Thunderbolts, putting the inhibitor collars found in the Thunderbolts' vans on their necks, thus taking their powers away. Eventually, Jessica Jones finds Luke Cage comforting Joseph, who's mourning the loss of his family. But wait, good news, folks, because we see the arrival of Joseph's siblings, whom are actually alive and well, yet they are stripped of their powers. But who's complaining? And so with the Purple Man's children being reunited, and with Joseph getting a happy ending, Jessica gets the word that Wilson Fisk has been arrested because Daredevil got to him. Therefore, Luke Cage will now be running for mayor of New York City unopposed. Sweet Christmas. Meanwhile, Wilson Fisk is getting arrested by the Thunderbolts and is being escorted to a prison. But once inside the transport truck, a guard acknowledges what a big deal it is to arrest a sitting mayor and that he's honored to be part of Wilson Fisk's arrest. And with the guard taking off his mask, it's revealed to be the kingpin of crime. It's revealed to be Fisk's own son, Butch, who has seemingly hijacked the transport. Arriving at a compound, Butch escorts his father inside, where Fisk is greeted by the Stormworms, who begin to taunt Fisk for the troubles that he has gotten himself in, and all because he didn't come to them for help. But lucky for him, Butch was smarter than his dad. Butch then lets his father know that the Stormwinds approached him with a great deal, one where he can operate in New York with full immunity, and all he has to do, increase the crime rate in areas that the Stormwinds want to acquire. And while Butch does that, the couple lets Fisk know that he is considered useful, for they would like to offer Fisk the opportunity to become the President of the United States. However, Fisk doesn't want to be the President of the United States. He wants to be the President of a free man. And holy shit, folks. Things get crazy, because Fisk begins to unload as he crushes Quinn's handshake. And this guy screams with agony. And while his wife Una calls the guards, Fisk goes up against the Stormwind forces, because his son needs to learn a lesson, that being a Fisk bows to no man, essentially teaching Butch the lesson that you don't make a deal with the devil when you are the devil. And so after decimating the Stormwinds, Fisk tells his son to let the world know, via whispers for the streets, that he killed Wilson Fisk in vengeance for attacking New York and for killing Matt Murdock, and that he rose and took what was rightfully his, the crown. Picking up one week later, Elektra meets with Daredevil on a rooftop overlooking New York City, and this is where she asks Daredevil if he's sure about this, if he's ready for what they're about to set off to do, but he lets her know that the world thinks Matt Murdock is dead, so basically there's nothing left for him in New York, therefore he is ready to think bigger, for Matt is ready to join the fist and to take down the hand once and for all. And with the pair putting on their horned masks together, Elektra and Matt Murdock leave New York behind, as the Daredevil set off to save the world. Elsewhere, Wilson Fisk and Mary arrive at a pier, where Wellesley is waiting for them with a yacht outfitted for their trip. And being the nice guy that he is, Fisk expresses his gratitude to Wesley's services. And yeah bro, if you ever need a reference bud, just shoot me a text. And with goodbyes being said and done, both Fisk and Mary sail off to begin a new journey, a life filled with happiness. And that, folks, was the end of Devil's Reign. And thank you guys for checking out my video, as it truly means the world to me. And as always, I am your majestic sayer of where it's Supercliff. And if you guys are new to the channel, then do me a solid by smashing that like and subscribe button. And also hit the notification bell so that you'll never miss out on an upload. And so that you'll always be kept up to date with your favorite top tier comics happening in the comic book world. Now tell me, what are your thoughts and opinions on this issue? Are you guys excited for the upcoming relaunch of Daredevil? Let me know down in the comment section below. And until the next video, peace.